You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. You will remember the experience and you'll remember the name of Bert Herfling. Oh, hi, you're watching Chewing the Cud, your light-hearted weekly look at the world through a very rainbow lens. I'm Mike Benyon Rowe, and with me today is our SM master, sorry, DNM D and D master. Don't know why I can't say that. Mist Kinsman. Hello, Mist. Hello there. Hi. How are you? I'm not doing too badly. Good, good. Is there a reason why we are channeling Anastasia from the 90s, from the early 2000s? Um, it's called are fashion. You, are you out of love? Ah, baby, come on. I'm bringing you a story about something getting a bit of a refresh that's not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis. It's actually, well, we'll tell you more about that later. But we will also get slap happy in Crafty Queens. And we even have a game you can play along with too. But on screen now you can see our contact details. It is at the Cud TV on social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge on us. YouTube, look for Chewing the Cud. You can see the names of people who've reached out and touched our souls go along the bottom of the screen as Mike gets ready to bring us up to date on things you may have missed from the news in The Buzz. <laughs> Are you a strong swimmer? Uh, fair to middling. It's been a while, though, to be fair. Are you not going swimming quite often? No. 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 Oh. I, I, I scare people what are you in doing the speedos. There? Doggy paddle. I can believe you're scaring people. <laughs> anyway, this is a story about a dog who has worried the world. A world with worrying it, dog. With its, with its water antics. Okay. And this is Pancake the puppy. Oh, well, that's a cute name for a dog. Yeah, pancake. Um, a golden retriever thing. Oh, right. golden, golden retrievers are always cute. Okay. Um, it could be something else. It, it's that big, shaggy dog. Um, but, yeah, has worried the world, as people could see it basically drowning at the bottom of a pool. Oh, no. But quite happily doing so. There is the puppy at the bottom of the pool. Wearing Crocs. Wearing Crocs and a fin. <laughs> why, why? That's the more troubling thing. Save it drowning. It's wearing Crocs. It's a crime against fashion. See, you can. It says you! Right. Um, so you can see Pancake at the bottom of the pool. Uh -huh. And then another angle. Puppy there. Concerning, no? Yeah, very much. Right. Here's the thing it's actually a fake pool. Okay. So the top is um, a very thin layer of water on glass. Oh, it's an art installation. It is, yeah. So it looks like the puppy or the dog is sat there underwater, but isn't. Well, technically is, but not surrounded by water. Oh, OK. Oh, all, all right. I, I, feel, I feel relieved now. I was quite concerned then for a moment. <laughs> um, um, but it still doesn't explain those crocs. Also wearing fins. You can't see it in this picture, but it has a fin on the back. Just, mm. Like a shark. They are a puppy shark. Do 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 do. Puppy shark. Do 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 do. You're welcome. That's going to be in my head for the rest of the day. Well, at least something is. Moving on. She's <laughs> <laughs> gagging on it. It doesn't even exist. Right. Um, <laughs> our, our newest prime minister. Oh yes. One that we've actually voted for rather than passed <laughs> for. Um, yeah. So we excite. I, I'm in two minds. I can't do worse. Well, that is that's the, that's that's the overriding the thing. thing. Cannot do worse. So, um, did you ever hear about Dishy Rishi? Um, it, early on in his uh, career, when he was still... <laughs> Before he turned out to be an absolute... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, in my opinion. Um, well, considering most prime ministers... I've, I've noticed this with all prime ministers. At the beginning, relatively coloured hair. At the end, distinct grey. It's a high-stress job. It is a high-stress job. Tony Blair, right, was quite a handsome man when he first started being a Prime Minister. Relatively speaking for ugly old white men, yes. He was one of the youngest Prime Ministers we had. Mm. I mean, he, was, he wasn't he was an unattractive guy. If... Mm, right? Yeah. Well, well, people are flooding their basements over Keir Starmer. The Stunner Starmer, as he's also been known. Um, they're saying with his high cheekbones and perfectly quaffed hair, he is definitely the dad at the playground you want to oh. Downing Street daddy. So, for that style of person, uh huh, uh, middle aged white guy kind of he's thing. He's in I his can... 60s. 
well, that, mm, time's been kind to him. Time has been kind. Like some people. I get it. I get it. He, I, if, if that's your thing... Then... It's not everybody's cup of tea. No. But, yeah, apparently he is he's causing housewives up and down the nation to straddle and flick a bean. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what was the problem with that? The straddling or the flicking? Just the idea that they're doing it over him. <laughs> Prime, Wednesday, Prime Minister's question time was a surge in the national grid. You're kidding me. Just from plugging mm. in all the vibrators. <laughs> People don't plug the vibrators into the mains. <laughs> Amateur. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you call me an amateur. Yeah. You should see mine. <laughs> Chainsaw, it's made an awful mess down there. And if you find something that's as totally serious as news that you want to share with us, please do. It is at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. And this is a story about self-confessed girl mum Kitty. Girl mum Kitty is... Are we talking girl somebody mom. who considers themselves a mother because they have a pet? No, no, no. They're a girl mum. Okay. So they're not like a cat mum or a dog mum. They have a human being that's popped out of their flute. Basically, Kitty Walls, which I think is a brilliant name for a stripper. Um, it is It is a stripper name. It's a stripper name, yeah. right? Or it gave me um, Victoria Wood flashbacks. She dressed up as a cow. On a night out. And basically served the gentleman her, her lactations. So she was serving, serving shots of breast milk to gentlemen in a bar. What's with the face? It's milk. No, I get that. But it's apparently doesn't, it's, 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 and it's, there's, it's all lovely and natural, but kitty... Walls. Walls. Cow. Cow. But it, it, it's just a lot going on. It's a lot. There's more. There's the, more. Because what she said is blokes go wild for the stuff, right? One person, they, they just don't have to spend any money. She takes a breast pump on a night out and she's bought drinks. But it just, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't taste very good ice as an adult. Well, people kept coming back for more. One man, that guy in orange, actually came back twice, right? And he's there going, no, I love the stuff. I was breastfed till seven. That makes sense. <laughs> right. Okay. Yep. Um, one of the one of the people there saying, not the guy in the orange doing it twice. That's weird. Yeah. Um, one said, "Go on, go home, Kitty. It's past your bedtime. Past your because cow suit." And I think I have the crap gags. You do. Um, <laughs> one said that they were utterly impressed. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, them acting like it's worse than liquor that they're drinking. So they're like, going, oh, it's awful. It's like they're doing shots. Lots and lots of <laughs> a positive reaction. And people queuing up to, to do shots of her, her boob extraction. Well, you, you, you know my usual... So long as it doesn't harm anyone and everybody's happy, it fine. It's, happy. Just, it, it's just a lot. Well, it's little shot glasses, not a lot. No, I mean a lot going on. This, this, okay. is, this is a, a, a very mad, crazy thing. But... If people are happy, let them. No problem with that. What I love is people have got so so far into the algorithm, look, you can't even put the word breast milk up without putting a three instead of an E. What is so wrong with saying that? Breast, there's nothing, breast is not a rude word. It's a perfectly natural thing. <laughs> so is a c***, but you don't talk, I'm not allowed to say that on TV, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Swear words are one thing. Even if they are describing something completely natural and about, there's nothing wrong with it. What about That's a pregnant fish. You can search that, you can Google that. Or and that's the argument that we always used in primary school. We still I've, never got away with ass, it. Rough-ass primary school were you going to? <laughs> I went to a very rough primary school. Don't let this voice confuse you. I'm not that posh. No one thought you were posh. You're not posh. Of course. Uh-huh. <laughs> he is out of love. <laughs> Who would like to be set free? <laughs> oh dear. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I've got into the Anastasia loop again. You really have. Because you're also wearing flares, which is a threat. I am wearing flares, but uh, and, and and formal shoes. Flares and formal shoes. I I I'm, I'm going for a very sexy look. Oh, it's such a shame you missed. Oh, you. <laughs> but that's all from the buzz this week. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Oh, I don't know why I rely on you for advice about fashion. 
you don't, and that's why you're wearing that outfit. You're welcome. Stay right there, as coming up after this short break, Miss brings us up to date with the celebrity news in showbiz. Oh, welcome back. You're watching Chewing the Cud. And this is the part of the show where we look into the what's, who's, and who's what's in the world of celebrity and media in the showbiz with Mist. Some people are easily amused, aren't they? We've got a little witch as a switch. <laughs> We've got more important things to be focusing on. Like what? Like the showbiz news. <laughs> so, are you ready for my I first story? That one, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah I was going to be. <laughs> so, our first story Kesha. She's back. Did she woke up this morning feeling like P. Diddy? Um, uh, maybe. Maybe. Brushing your teeth with a bottle of Jack Daniels. I'd use a toothbrush. <sighs> he knows all the lyrics, doesn't he? Um, no, she's been away for a while. She's not <laughs> released any songs for, for a while because there was this uh, whole issue with uh, the producer that she was working mm -hmm. for and and uh, nothing was actually confirmed or anything, but it's been settled out of court, I believe, okay, and she can get back to doing things. Good. Um, which is great and glad to have her back. Um she also had a bit of an injury. She damaged her ACL, and I've I've had similar problems myself, so I know how terrible that you injury just, is. Just sit on a, a, a inflatable ring for a couple of weeks if you bruise that, don't you? No, no. I I had my ACL. My well, she tore hers. I severed mine. I don't know what an ACL is. It's the little ligament that runs through your knee. Oh. So if you damage that really badly, you're is that why crippled, you walk like basically. that. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Is that why you fall off stages? Yeah. The, the, no, no jokes. It, it is really a very, very painful thing. I, I didn't walk for about a year altogether because oh. uh, of surgery and all that. Cause, so I, I, I understand <laughs> her pain. Didn't walk for about a year. There was an Uber. It was easier. <laughs> <laughs> this is a personal... Tra He's making light of my trauma. Um, Your trauma? You don't have to look at your outfit. <sighs> this is fashion. Anyway, Kesha, um, she's really, when you look at it, been out of the game prop fully for about 10 years. Right. So now she's come back and look at her. She's absolutely stunning and an amazing artist. That's at Comic-Con, I believe. You can tell. How? What, what gave the, it away? The big San Diego Comic-Con <laughs> at the back. <laughs> she looks great and she started to release new songs. Uh, uh, the new song that she released is called Joyride, which is quite good. I love it. Oh, you're enjoying it. I enjoy the song. I, I listen to it on the radio and I have to beep and that many different words. It's I thought the, there was a problem with my car to start <laughs> driving along going, oh, there's a problem with that audio. It keeps cutting it. No, they're swear words. Because it's not done the whole thing where they play it backwards and mask it. They just cut the noise. Ke Kesha's songs for me are always growers. Like, I don't tend to like them the first couple of hearings, but then when it ends up in play and it just keeps coming back, it's like, oh, I get it now. It, they're, they're built, Kesha's songs are always builders for me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's been 10 years. She's, she's grown. She's, she's changed. She's, evolved, she's womaned. She's, she's womaned. <laughs> she's womaned. But you change over that, over that time of period. Yeah, yeah. So styles. now people have come, uh, come out on the internet, as they will do, trolling her. Saying, oh, you're all fat now. You don't look that as good as you used fat. to. Exactly. Look at her. She is f***ing hot. Absolutely. She's stunning. I'm sorry. If I, if I was... If that's fat, I wish I was that fat. Not this fat. Well, it's, it's, it's the whole body shaming thing. Yeah. And she had, she had a really good comeback to it and a really good attitude to have. Okay. Um, so what she said to it was this. I didn't think in 2024 people still body shamed. I am so proud of my body. She's been through a lot. Mm -hmm. She's torn her ACL on stage but still finished the show. She held my f***ing broken heart together. She's a beautiful way of thinking about your own body. And then she followed that up. To those who think of shaming me, you actually make me feel very, very powerful. So to you, I hope one day you feel whole enough to not tear another woman down. In the meantime, hate me harder, bitch. Beautiful comeback. <laughs> so, yeah, hats off to the lady. Yes. And glad to have you back, Kesha. 
there's a tweet that's gone out that uh, shows a side-by-side image of Hunt Schaefer and mm. Emma Darcy. Okay. Two wonderful actors. Um, and... All it is is that there is a post, and underneath it, it reads, Hunter Schaefer and Emma Darcy of Vampire Rom-Com, when, question mark. Because in this tweet, uh-huh. you see these two actors in quite sexy leather gear. And they do look do look good, and they do look like they could be in a, a Vampire Rom-Com. Um, Hunter Schaefer has responded to this tweet, which uh-huh. has made it go viral, and they've even been questioned about it during an interview. But okay. there's nothing to it. There's no vampire rom com. There's no. It's just. It's just a couple of pictures. Why is there no vampire rom com? There should be. That's that's what the appeal is really. And Hunter Schaefer is all all up for it. They've they've absolutely gone so, for it. So Hunter said yes. But based on absolutely nothing, it's just a tweet from a fan. Hunter said no. What was the other person's name? I've forgotten. Emma Darcy. Emma. What has Emma Darcy said about this? Absolutely nothing. Because oh. there's nothing to say. Well, you see, there is. There's the art of saying no about things. No, that's not true. It's nice, but no. Not saying no. Not saying it's not saying it's not going to happen. I could say uh, I'm having a, a torrid affair with uh, Michael Keaton. Okay. I don't know why Michael Keaton came to my. <laughs> I'm not. No. Is no. Michael Keaton dead? <laughs> no. He's not... Oh, that's Patrick Swayze. <laughs> So, yeah, there's an exclusive for this episode of Chewing the Cud. <laughs> Mist is apparently having a, a, an affair with Michael Keaton. Well, apparently he didn't say no, so therefore it must be true. I didn't say it must be true. I said it leaves a possibility that it could be true. It, there's no possibility that's true. No. There's, Do you know why? Because no. Michael Keaton is heterosexual <laughs> and has eyes. It wouldn't be the first heterosexual that... <laughs> <laughs> Did we hear the penny drop for everybody else? Got another story for us there, Mist? I really don't know why I do this show. I really don't. Moving on to She's the third... Are, f- are you a fan of the film The Devil Wears Prada? A little bit. I mean, I've started a new diet, and every time I start to feel a little bit faint, I eat a cube of cheese. That's a quote from the film. Yes, I am aware. It's been a long time since i watched it, but I am aware... Anyway, recently, the three main actresses, they were at the uh, SAG, SAG Awards. Do we just say SAG? I don't know what the SAG Awards are. Screen Actors Guild. Okay, so uh, not, not going... So you have the biggest prolapse. Congratulations. They were at the Screen Actors Guild, and it's a very big thing having the three of them together presenting, big, an, presenting an award. They were presenting... Uh, what was it again? Anne Hathaway. It, Anne Hathaway, Meryl Streep and Emily Blunt. And they, the main headliners of uh, the, the Devil Wears Prada, they were at the SAG Awards, presenting the award for the best comedy series, and they had a bit of to and fro and a little references to the film. Uh, that that's where they are, uh, and it was very fun, very light hearted. But of course, there's always speculation: is there going to be another one? Well, good news. Apparently, there is. Oh, it's in the works. Not fully gone through. Thing, it's still in development. Okay. But there's a whole thing about, um, apparently the plot is going to be Miranda Priestly. Mm -hmm. She is coming to the end of her career. And the magazine medium is dying out in favour of things for the internet, etc. And her old assistant comes to her aid and and helps helps solve the issue. Saves the magazine. Oh, call me Natalie Umbrulia. I'm torn. Um... I love The Devil Wears Prada. Mm-hmm. It is such a brilliant film. It is iconic. It's it's a classic. Epically acted. Mm-hmm. Funny as shit. Mm-hmm. Right. Brilliant story arc and a great a great happy ending for everybody. Mm-hmm. Right. It's complete. It's 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 seminal. Mm-hmm. I want to say. I think they should just leave it the <laughs> alone. There are yeah there are some times where leaving it alone like people might be. Wanting more, I but want more, leave but... them wanting more. And I get that. I think the big key issue is that it's still in development, so oh. that plot idea may not be the final plot idea. I hope it's not. I know that the original was based on a book of the same name, mm-hmm. so I, but I don't know if that book has a sequel that they could base a second movie on. No, because that book was based on um, 
can I say Anna Wintour? Um, that working for Anna Wintour, who was of mm-hmm. course head of Vogue and now is head of like, a worldwide publishing house, mm-hmm. um, and it was very much that that was her stick. She was hard hard to work for, but you say I was Anna Wintour's assistant, and you could walk into any job. Um, so it was based on that kind of character. Yeah, but it's still a fictionalized it's a fiction. story. Yeah, but based. But on I that. don't know if there is a, a follow up fictionalized story that yeah. they could base a second film over. But the clincher is. We don't know where Anne Hathaway is in this. We know that Emily Blunt and uh, Meryl Streep are up for it Mm -hmm. and that they are developing something around those two characters. But the protagonist of the first movie is Andy. And if they maybe have a new protagonist, that might bring a new fresh look and that fresh thing. I always get very worried when they bring everybody back for a a sequel. Mm -hmm. It's like the stories were complete. Uh, But... I think it's quite an exciting prospect, and if it's going to get through development and be good, let it go through development and be good. But that's all I have for you in the showbiz news this week. Thanks for that, Mist. I should have said, that's all. Well, stay tuned. Apparently it's the 1990s, um, because coming up, we have a game to play in our Game of the Week. Why did you just do that? Anyway, welcome back to Chewing the Cud. With, yeah, you. With me, Mike Benyon Rowe, and then Miss Kinsman. This part of the show is where we play a little game. But before I dismiss you off to your enchanted grotto, okay, broom cupboard, um, <laughs> this weekend it was Sparkle, which is the trans and non binary event that happens in Manchester. We have a clip of some of the fun and frivolity. Black at my heart again. I barely believe What's in my heart again My can't betray You me in my end You're Here alone in a paradise it Makes me think of two Love lost such a cause Give me things that don't get lost like a coin that won't get tossed Roll it home to you Hello, I'm Jonathan Mayer at Sparkle Weekend. Um, we are obviously hugely relieved that we're not going to Tory government anymore. Um, but we have to push Labour to act properly, to support our trans siblings. We have to write to them and protest to tell where Street is a silly boy. Silly, silly, silly boy. Looks like a lot of people had a great time. Yeah, it's a good event. Yeah, uh, lots of people celebrating their trans and non-binary selves. <laughs> Did you have a good time? I, I had a great time because my, my partner is non-binary. Mm-hmm. So, you know, going along and celebrating themselves and sharing their experiences and stuff, it was great. Um, was that a, a good space for them? Yeah, yeah it's, it's because it's a safe space yeah. and, and you get to be all with your siblings. and it's mm. Trans and non-binary joy is probably my favourite kind of queer joy. Don't forget that it's Trans Pride in Brighton on the 20th. So if you haven't made plans to go yet, get them sorted. Yes, and of course, it is Leeds Pride on the 21st. But now to our game. And this one is for the man who once used an appendage of a partner to, well, I can't really say what he was going to do, but it involves a lot of lube. Off your pop, mist. In your own time. Game of the Week. So this week we're going to play a game of myth or no myth. And this one is for myth. That's weird to say. Um, and it's got a selection of cards and basically you're going to ask me a question. I have to work out whether it's true or a dirty lie. It's an exciting game. I don't know if you're ready for it. Anyway, um, I would like to pick the letter M for M. Mike. M for, M for Mike, OK. Right, here we go. So... Athletics in the ancient Olympics used to be executed as punishment for making a false... Oh, hang on. Sorry, I've read that wrong. Do apologise. It's because I've not got my actual glasses on. I'm wearing my sunglasses, which don't allow me to read things properly. (laughs) It's going well, isn't it? Right. Myth or no myth? 
athletes in ancient in the ancient Olympics used to be executed as a punishment for making a false start. Myth or no myth? That's true. Are you sure? I am saying it's true. <sighs> uh, it's 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 a myth. Complete oh. lies. No, it didn't happen. Well, as far as we know, it was the ancient Olympics, so they I, used to I wasn't do it there naked. The time. They did. They used to be completely naked, mm. and also at the time, small penises were attractive. I know. I know. People have always told me I'm ugly. Uh, would you like another letter? You, you know that that changed, right? Would you like another letter? Uh, yeah, I would. I'd like. I'd like a Y for Yankee. A Y. Oh, you're working your way along the list. I am. Very, very much in order. I like this. It's efficient. Um, okay. In proportion to its size, the height of a flea jump is equivalent to a human jumping over the Empire State Building. That's true. It is true. It is true. I remember that from a, 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 a Scouting for Boys book of facts. And I know that to be true. Scouting for Boys book of facts. Yes. I used to be a scout. I was a cub. And then I was a scout. Uh-huh. So I, I know how to whittle wood and make a fire. Would you like a, a, another letter? And how do you make this fire? From whittling the wood and then rubbing it together. You rub your wood together with other boys and it got you hot. Mm -hmm. I like the letter T for tango, please. Ooh, I do. Well, I've got three T's because myth has a T and truth has two T's. Which 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 two T's or two, one T do you want? Which T? I like all the T's, no shade. <laughs> okay, we'll go for a triple then. How is that actually going to work? Well, I'll read all three of them and you have to go in order which one's right and remember which one they came in. Okay. We'll do it that way because it, it sounds complicated and dramatic. Identical twins have identical fingerprints. No. After the Soviet newspaper Pravada, I think that's how it's pronounced, complained that there were no Russians on the USS Enterprise in the TV series Star Trek, the character of Ensign Chekhov was introduced. No. And elephants can remain standing after death. True. So it's lie, lie, true. Bang on! You're, you're quite good at this. You tried to test the trekking. <laughs> well, yeah. I... Chekhov was put in by, um, so it's Desilu Productions, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they wanted to have a diverse cast, and because it was the height of the Cold War, what they were saying was that in this in this era, all of that idea has disappeared, right? And that you know Russians and like, Americans can work together quite happily. And that's because um, Lucille Ball was continually accused of being a communist because her stepfather was a member of the Communist Party, even though she was technically because she signed the paper that he told her to sign, but didn't actually want to be a communist and didn't go to any rallies or anything. Uh, next week on Nerd Corner, uh, we will... Just before she died, she was off and not on poppers. Oh, oh <laughs> Once you start a Trekkie off, they can't stop. This is a Lu Lucille Ball thing. It's really... They're, There's they're... a reason why my car is called Lucille. What letter would you like next, Mike? I'd like one T. You'd like one T. We'll go with the first T. Okay. Just one in the pack. America's suicide rate went up during the Great Depression of the 1930s. False. We're very depressed. You're correct. It is false. It was the stock market that was depressed, not the people. So yes, some people committed suicide quite spectacularly by jumping off the top of tall buildings, but that was quite rare. You, you know a lot of useless trivia, don't you? I am useful in a pub quiz. If I'm sober, which doesn't happen in pub quizzes that often. You were one of those children that just had books of facts, weren't you? No. I bet your favourite thing at Christmas was to get the Guinness Book of Records, wasn't nope, it? never had a copy. You missed out. I uh, next letter. Information. I'm a polymath. I learn things. Next letter. Yes. Uh, I want a H. Want a H? You really are going along in order, aren't you? Actress Jane Mansfield was decapitated in a car crash that claimed her life. False. It's not true. No, it's not true. I can't remember who... There was an actress who did get um, her her scarf trapped around the back wheel of the car and it knocked her red off, but I can't remember the name of the actress. It wasn't James, James Mansfield. Lauren Bacall died in a boat. Hmm. 
lovely celebrity death. Well, lovely thing to reflect on. Um, so, next letter. H. H. I take it you mean the back end H of the last word. No, the first H. First H? Oh, okay, then. Nature. Lightning starts more forest fires than people do. No, it's not true. It's true. Not true. It's true. Lightning happens, right? Thunderbolts and lightning. Very, very frightening bee. Right. Galileo, Galileo. No, no, it happens because of a scary bee. Right? Because they're fluffy, they rub together. Very, very frightening, the bees. Right? Um, happens when it rains, and wet wood doesn't catch fire that well. Well, what can I tell you? There are the facts according to you, and there's the facts according to these cards. Um, I'd like to go for a tea, please, Bob. Another tea, okay. Ooh! Princess Anne was once arrested for riding a Truth. horse on the hard shoulder of Truth. the M1. Truth. Truth. You, you, you said that as soon as I said Princess Anne. Princess Anne got arrested, it's true. She did get arrested. She did. Yes. But not for riding a horse on the hard shoulder of the M1. It's a myth. See, that's you for, then? going too early. What did she get arrested for, then? I, I know that she did get arrested at some point for something. I'm not sure she did, you know. Oh, no. Um, guilty to one charge of having a dog dangerously out of control. Oh, that's, that's, I, thought it was, I thought it was a ve ve vehicular crime. So I was, I was wrong. Yeah. And you were wrong, too. We're both wrong together. And I think that's a learning experience there for all of us. Uh, another letter? Yes, I want a tea. Want another tea? Oof, we're running out of teas. You keep drinking this much tea. Uh, the 17th century composer Jean Baptiste Lully died after striking himself in the foot with a baton whilst conducting. Were you there? I'm not that old or that cultured. I don't really go to concerts anymore. I can't believe it. Striking himself in the foot with a baton. Mm hmm. Um, was it a chocolate baton? No, it, I think it was one of the little sticks that he was conducting with and he might have dropped it on his foot. Dropped or struck, because they're different actions. Because dropped like, oh, Well, on back. the card it says striking. I know, So maybe true. he was just conducting very vigorously. Then it's true. Because they, they true. go with a thwack. Yeah, it is true. Me? I do. I'm yeah. clever, that. Yeah. I'm clever, me. You, you do know a lot of stuff. Yeah. Or you're just being very lucky with your guesses. Yeah, I am being good. Or I've read the answer to the questions already. That's enough for now. Coming up after this short break, Miss brings us a look into the more creative side of his mind as we go into Crafty Queens. You're watching Mist and Mike and Chewing the Cud. This is the time when we take a moment to relax and do something a little more sedate in Crafty Queens. So, I'm going to show you some lovely ingredients here, little items and bits and bobs, and see what we can make with it. Okay. Uh, you should have in front of you some vinegar. I have some vinegar. Mm hmm So, you should also have two piles of powder. I one... do, and no credit card. No, no, not, it's, it's not, the, these are, these are not that kind of substance. No, we have bicarbonate of soda. Which is the crystally one, I believe. Mm hmm Okay. And baking powder. Which is the non crystally one. Mm hmm Okay. You'll also have a, a little plastic glove and uh, some balloons. Uh-huh, yes, I do. I have all of those things. So, how would you like to make a puffer fish? Are we making it so that we can eat it? No, it's not to eat. It's just to look pretty and be okay. kind of fun. Okay, go on then. So basically, you've got some. You'll probably want to decorate it first. So if you want to take one of your balloons, and you should have a little felt tip. I do have a tip. Yes. And if you just want to take your balloon, and somewhere on the on the round bit of it, draw a little smiley face, and that'd be your puffer fish. A couple of eyes and a little smile. 
We've got a few uh, balloons here, so you can try it a couple of times just in case. Just in case the first one doesn't work. Is that because you expect you to do them wrong? Um, I expect you to do it wrong. Um, I'm just being prepared and efficient. Next change. <laughs> so yes. You've given me a faulty felt tip. Well, a poor workman blames their tools. There says, we go. Says someone has given the workman poor tools. <laughs> right, okay, I've got some sort of faces on them. So you got you got some leave those to dry, put them aside for the moment. Okay. And then I want you to get your glove. Into this. We put our hand and say, prepare yourself. <laughs> you have a very filthy mind. Uh, it's probably a good idea to give it a bit of a blow. Huh? Just to open it up wide. I've already opened it up wide with my fist. Because <laughs> I'm a gentle lover. <laughs> I'm, I'm more delicate than that by just uh, anyway. blowing a light breeze across it with my lips. Um, anyway, if you want to take your vinegar, I've got mine in a mug here, and pour that into the glove. Okay. Nice and delicately, I don't want you to look. Am I aiming for a finger? Um, well, we want to do two of these, so try to get in two fingers. Mine's got a little bit floppy all over the place. I've got three fingers. And I've got three balloons. <laughs> You've got three fingers. Okay. And you'll want to tie these off with uh, some elastic bands, which you should have. Do I want to tie them off elastic bands? Well, I'm going to go slightly different to how you're doing it then. Ooh. I'm going to do one, one at a time so I don't have the potential of leaky vinegar flying everywhere. <laughs> I am having leaky vinegar. But yes, you want to just capture all that vinegar into some of the fingers and just take that off and try not to spill any more of it than I already have Oof. it's a very big elastic band for tying this off oh dear let's see I have had a slight spillage of vinegar there is a, quite a strong smell. I'm going to have fish and chips later on tonight now. don't know why I'm inspired to do that, but we'll do. But yes, if you just use the elastic band to tie that off and trap the vinegar in your finger, so it becomes a, a nice, little, nice little pocket. A pocket? A, a, po a pocket of vinegar. Pocket of vinegar, a okay. Po a little pocket. A poly pocket of vinegar. Oof. How are you doing over there? I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I've almost complete. Does it need to be quite taut or quite loose? Um, it needs to be quite full. A nice full, a full dollop appendage. of vinegar in a finger. So really puffed up. Like that. Yes, that'll do it. Oh. Oh, why didn't you know then? Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, I can taste it through my nose. That's not good, is it? Ooh. Oh, dear. Do two. We have to do two. Um, just in case the first one doesn't work. Okay. But, yes, I'm, I'm struggling with my second finger. <laughs> you said that before. <laughs> so you should have these two little separate do droplets now. Full of vinegar. In a little plastic bag. I do indeed. Lovely. Right, now you want to take your powders. We've got two different powders here because we're going to test a little bit of science. Okay. See which one works better. And I want you to take your little uh, balloons from earlier, the ones with little faces on it, yeah. and fill one with one powder, the baking powder, and fill the other one with the bicarbonate soda. You say the word fill. Get in as much as you can. Get a heft in there. A, a, hef, a hefty dose. Okay. Now, it's going to be so a little bit difficult because we're having to do this by the pinch. By carb? Well, that's baking powder. That's, that's a... Either or. Just, you know, sugar the rim a little bit and try and get as much as you can in the hole. But you, don't, you want me to go in dry, surely? Well. <laughs> well, you definitely do. <laughs> If, 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 if you can tease the hole a little bit wider before you start trying to shove it all in, right, that might I've help. Got, I've got sufficient quantities in both there. Okay. Well, I've only just done the one. Let me get the other. And then what do we do? Well, once you've got your powder in position, yeah. I want you to take 
your balloon. Probably give it a little bit of a blow first just to widen up the entrance. And then I want you to take one of your little droplets from your finger fingered gloves and pop it inside. So one second. So you want me to blow air into something with a powder in it? <laughs> well, stretch it open then. Give it, you know, because you need to be able to get the finger in. Okay, well, I'm just going to... And you're not going to get the finger in without, you know, manipulating it a little bit. I think you'll find I will. Just a bit of brute force, that's all you need. <clears throat> How have you oh. managed to maintain a partner? Huh? How have you managed to, man to maintain a partner? Because I'm very dirty in bed. <laughs> right, once I've got the, the, the liquidy filled vessel inside do i tie it off or do i just oh yes if you will tie it off yes oh you're going you're rushing ahead here you've asked me to insert something into a, a tight aperture yes basically how did you do that how did i do that yes well there's willpower there's a way <laughs> this is very successful i am very successful i keep it up open with two fingers and then shove it in oh well, I'm struggling to do the action. So I just I just force it open with my fingers like this, right? And I just pop it in. Well, I'm trying to do that. You can see why I'm single. Ah. There's many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you want to get it in there delicately. No, I've been a bit rough, and I've got it in. Ooh, it's it's so tight. I know, but I still managed to get it in, and I'm done. Oof. I have fully inserted into two. Were you fully inserted? Okay, so. Oh, gold. Right, there we go. Right, I've at least got one puffer fish sorted. Now, remember. Remember what? If you can't find any peen, vagine, or anything in between, be a crafty queen. So, you should have a little balloon with a little smiley face on it. You might look in pain, but I was not gentle. <laughs> no, you weren't. So, the trick is, if you just pop it on the, the table, I think mine's set off already, just uh, give it a little whack. <laughs> look! A puffer fish! Ah. Proper blow it up. <laughs> Hopefully not too much. <laughs> Otherwise, all the electronics are going to go mad. But yeah, look, that's a puffer fish. Okay, that's got very excited. <laughs> Clever, that is it. Clever's a strong word. Clever and artistic. Both words that I would not use for that. Well, if you've seen how to do it, you can try it at home. That's almost the end of the show, but for now on screen you can see our contact details. It's at the Cud TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up on previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Look for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next week. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Don't you dare! No, no. Hold that for a second. No, no. Get off. No. <laughs> <laughs>